and good morning, everyone. Welcome back. So good to be back with you. Here we are uh, again on Morning Musings. My name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma. And uh, as just suggested, this is what I call my Morning Musings, in which I share with you a few thoughts from God's Word. And we are currently discussing the dating of the book of Revelation. Uh, the, the dating of the book of Revelation is absolutely critical to understand the proper application, the proper interpretation of the book. And so it's, it's very, very important that we understand the proper historical context, the proper prophetic context, the proper thematic context in which the book of Revelation was written. And the dominant theme, the, the, the dominant issue, in the book of Revelation is martyr vindication. Of this there can be no doubt. If you have any doubts about that, go back to the first and the second uh, video in this series and take a look at them again in which I chronicle chapter by chapter how martyr vindication is so dominant. Well, One of the key things I'm sharing with you is that Revelation is about the fulfillment of God's old covenant promises made to Israel about events to happen in her last days. One of the books, one of the Old Testament books, upon which Revelation draws over and over again, just like Revelation draws from Deuteronomy, the Song of Moses, just like it draws from Isaiah, just like it draws from Zechariah, the book of Revelation draws extensively from the book of Joel. And of course, this is recognized by scholar after scholar. For instance, uh, Greg Beale, uh, in his massive commentary on the New Testament use of the Old Testament by Beale and D.A. Carson, they take note of the fact of how many times Joel 2 and 3 are incorporated in the book of Revelation. Other scholars have noted the same thing. Okay. Joel predicted that in the last days, the Holy Spirit would be poured out. Jerusalem, i.e. Zion, would be exalted, be the capital of the Messianic kingdom. The remnant would be saved, and all nations would then be brought into the presence of God, those who would flow to Jerusalem, that is. Now notice chapter 3 verse 1 says, In those days and at that time. Those days and what time? The, the last days that's been referred to in Joel 2, 28 and following. That time. What time? In the last days period of time. In those days and at that time I will gather all nations to judgment. In the last days would be the gathering of the nations for judgment. Well, there you have Revelation chapter 16, the gathering of all the nations for this great battle of Armageddon in which God's great and awesome day would take place. Chapter 3 continues. In this, in those days, and at that time period, Notice that the Lord said, and oh, by the way, I'm going to, I'm going to share with you uh, some thoughts from the, uh, the New Jerusalem Bible this morning. So, Joel chapter 3, verse 17 and following. When that day comes, what day? The last days and the day of the Lord. See, all of these are the antecedent references that chapter 3 is developing. In the last days... And in that day, that day is the day of the Lord, which would occur in the last days. Joel is not saying the last days were present. He is projecting himself into the last days and says, when the last days arrived, here's what's going to happen. In that day, that's the day of the Lord, when that day comes, the mountains will run with new wine. The hills will flow with milk. And all the stream beds of Judah will run with water. A fountain will spring from Yahweh's temple. And water the gorge of the acacias. 
Egypt will become a desolation, Egypt a desert waste, on account of the violence done to the children of Judah, whose innocent blood they shed in their country. Judah will be inhabited forever, and Jerusalem from generation to generation. I shall avenge their blood, and let no one go unpunished, and Yahweh will dwell in Zion. Well, there's so many constituent elements here. But notice a couple of key elements. Number one, in that day, there would be the fountain that would flow from Zion. Well, here's Revelation chapter 21 and 22, 22 particularly the river of life flowing out of the city. Well, what's the city? The New Jerusalem, that is the New Zion. Perfect correlation. And at that time, Yahweh would dwell in Zion. Well, Zion is the capital of the kingdom. It's the new Jerusalem. John said, I saw a new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven. And a voice saying, the tabernacle of God is with man. Well, Joel predicted God dwelling in Zion. Here is God in the new Jerusalem coming down from God to dwell with man. And God promised the avenging of the blood of his martyrs. We have shown Revelation is about the final defeat of the enemies of God. Uh, it's the city spiritually called Egypt, Revelation 11, verse 8. Joel says, Egypt will be a desolation. See, these are code words, spiritual terms being applied to this last day's period and in that day. So, the book of Revelation, in every point, follows the book of Joel. But Joel is told, in those days, the day of the Lord will be near, Joel 3.14. Now watch this. Remember, <clears throat> Peter on the day of Pentecost stood up after the Holy Spirit has come upon them and they have spoken in tongues. They've been accused of being drunk. Peter stands up and says, Brethren, these men are not drunken, as you suppose, seeing it's about the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. What did Joel predict? The coming of the last days. The coming of the day of the Lord. When the last days arrived, the day of the Lord would be at hand. When the last days arrived, God would dwell in Zion. And when the last days arrived, God would avenge the blood of his martyrs. Peter said they were in the last days. This is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Then he said, Acts 2 verse 40, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. There's a passage you need to see, Isaiah chapter 60, 22 predicting events of the last days, just like Joel. Yahweh said in Isaiah 60, 22, in its day, in other words, when, when the days finally, when the last days finally arrive, I will bring it to pass swiftly. Now, do you catch the power of that? Joel said, when the last days arrive, the day of the Lord will be near. When the, day, when the last days arrived, I will avenge the blood of the saints. Peter, quoting Joel, said, We're living in the last days. Save yourselves from this generation. Application to Revelation. Revelation anticipated the fulfillment of Joel. What did Peter say? Save yourselves from this untoward generation. The, the fulfillment of Joel, as foretold in Revelation, was to be in that first century generation. And that means Revelation was written before the fall of Jerusalem in AD 70. You know what? 
We've got even more. But don't forget, all of this is in my book, Who Is This Babylon? Go to my website, www.eschatology.org, www.bibleprophecy.com. Order the book. Mention that you offer the, saw the offer on YouTube and Facebook, and I'll refund your shipping. And not only that, don't forget, I'm going to sweeten it off for a little bit, okay? I will include a free copy of my presentation on the Millennium from the Predator's Perspective, in which I cover martyr vindication extensively. I will also include a free copy of Can God Tell Time? This has been gone through five major printings. It has changed the lives of countless thousands of individuals. You really need to do this. Get a copy of Who Is This Babylon? Free copy of the Criswell presentation on the Millennium Martyr Vindication, a free copy of Can God Tell Time. Hey, thanks again for joining me for this morning's Morning Musings. We'll see you on the flip side.